Hi, today we are going to present our auditor assignment and to present auditor performance and their liabilities. So these are our group members, Aris, Umar, uh, Sandesh and Sunny. My name is Aris Qureshi and I'm going to present the introduction of this part, this presentation. So Taiko International was a company which diverse services and manufacturing units which used to deal in fire protection and safety alarms, medical related products, services and security services. The company was listed on New York Stock Exchange from late 90s to 2000 until the Security and Exchange Commission find out about the fraud. As you see, the Tyco International was engaged in many fraudulent and falsifying activities. <clears throat> As you see, the Tyco International inflated their revenue 5.8 billion euro 2007, misleading their shareholder and many other st stakeholders of Tyco International. During this period, PwC was the auditor of Tyco International. It was their responsibility, responsibility to find out the fraud upon uh, find out the fraud and upon finding it was duty of to report but they did not which make them guilty of criminal law as well as civil law as we would see the report or that although pwc came to know about all those irregulation mentioned above still they were not bothered and Uh, next part, uh, irregulation in kelp. So what is kelp? Uh, Tyco International Kelp Program established in 1983 to refacilitate the ownership in common share of Tyco International by the director of other key executive and employees. As you see, the Kolwoski borrow uh, 270 million and he uh, only two, 29 million used to pay for tax and the other guy sorts for 99 million and only 13 million used to pay for tax. As you see, Taiko International was involved in uh, fraudulent activities but, <clears throat> but the auditor of Taiko International, it was PwC responsibility to disclose this to shareholder and they did not disclose it. And for the next part, will be present my friend Sunny. Hello, my name is Sunny Sresta. I'm here to talk about the remaining part of our presentation. Uh, basically, I've been talking about the Taiko International denial to disclose the relocation loans. Uh, loan was given for Taiko relocation for their office in New York and Florida, but it's been found that consistently the personal use of the staff to buying the houses and the properties which we can see as like a certain amount of time and disclosure but the upper management was failure to found this inconsistency of the disclosure which supposed to be their prime responsibility but they failed to disclose all these relocation loans and despite of this one but pwc has not raised any issues on that one which is can raise the issues of integrity and the fair presentation of the professional care of auditor as well as next please Samely, the manipulation of purchasing accounting results has been found as well during the time in year 1998 and 1999 all the reserves has been manipulated from the company from the upper uh, upper management company as to make their ebit targets higher so that they can look good in the form in the financial state, which is against the rules of IFRS, IAS, GAAP, but still because of PwC has not been responsibility to inform this to the shareholders, which has raised the issues on integrity of PwC as well. Next, please. 
Uh, as per the yield accounting practices, the Tyco has been found of reversing their general reserves as well in October 1998 and in October 1998 and 99. Consequently, they have uh, reversed their reserves in many instances to make their EBIT good and this was covered and has been memorandum to the auditor but PwC was asked to reverse it but initially they uh, initially they agreed but later on they refused to do so and which gives the PwC to disclaim the report but it doesn't sound like a good report but still PwC has given the good audit opinion on the following things uh, thank you for this and remaining part will be talked by my friends in thank you very much and I'm going to continue on the on our further presentation um, it has been found that the company was also involved in the inappropriate accounting treatment for the executive bonuses Tyco company conducted a, a IPO for its subsidiary company fully owned by itself in July 2000 and it was and it successfully gathered around like 1.76 billion out of which the whole uh, bonuses were divided out of which the, all the profits were divided as a bonus to the executive and the managers I'm not sure the, um, Tyco has sold its ADT automotive business in October 2000 and made a profit of 400 million and out of that also the company decided to give the 56 million as a bonus to its executive and so this proves that the accounting term, uh, the, all the profits was not treated as a in a good way so and also the PwC was also aware about, about the things going on and uh, so they didn't but they didn't manage to uh, inform the shareholders so both Tyco and PwC uh, were involved in a criminal case as they had uh, gone against the law, federal law, and Tyco piloted, piloted the Exchange Act and Exchange Rules Act, so both of them could not perform their work with due diligence and integrity and were on the, the criminal offense. So for the next part, I want to call my friend Umer. Thank you. So my name is Mohammad Umar and I'll be talking about what happened after the cases went into the district court of Hampshire that it took five years to be solved but after the judgment came out Tyco had to pay 2.95 billion dollars and PwC had to pay 225 million dollars. The executives cause Loki and Swords were sent to prison for 25 years and the lead auditor Scalzo was banned because he had the professional duty of care bar towards the investors but he didn't do that. So, as a part of a recommendation, what should auditors do just to avoid these cases? We'll give some recommendations. So, these are a couple of recommendations that we'll be giving. So, they should uh, follow the globally accepted uh, accounting standards. They should follow them. So, the basic thing is they have a duty of care and responsibility towards the investors. So, once they are irregular and do not give qualified opinions, they are basically breaking that trust with the, towards the investors and as it says in the assignment and in a presentation that it says in the presentation that they should follow the country law and if they break that they are viola violating that and these are a couple of recommendations like they should do extensive risk assessments they should avoid familiarity threat or anywhere where the independence is being penalized they should try to avoid that or at least give Disclaimer or give it qualified opinion. So that was it from our presentation. Thank you.